Now that we know how to design neural networks and are able to define uh, the loss that we want to minimize, let's recap how we can minimize losses via stochastic gradient descent. In this video, we're going to look at what it means to perform stochastic gradient descent in the context of neural network training. Now the setting is that we have just defined our neural network. So we know how many output neurons uh, I need and we know which kind of loss I have to minimize. This could be, for example, the least squares uh, loss in regression or uh, the logistic loss or the cross entropy loss in classification problems. And now our objective is to find the most optimal set of uh, model parameters W that really minimizes uh, this error function. And so far we have been really lucky that our error functions were always convex. So that meant that if we apply some gradient descent method or whatever uh, alternative, we always end up with a globally optimal uh, set of parameters uh, that really globally minimizes my error function. But now with neural networks, with these complicated functions, which are highly nonlinear, I, no I no longer have this guarantee that my uh, error function is convex, which means that I can expect to observe several local minima in my uh, error landscape. And that is depicted over here. So this is my energy landscape and let's say I have two of such uh, valleys, uh, local optimal locations are these. So if I now apply gradient descent and I start at this point, for example, and I walk downhill, then I may end up in this local minimum and there's no way I'm going to get out of it because I just follow the gradient downhill. At this point, the gradient is zero and all my surrounding, in my surroundings, all the gradients point uh, upwards, basically. So there's no way I'm going to ex escape my local minimum over here. And I do want that because I want to go to the most optimal uh, set of parameters. Um, so how do we reach this global minimum? Now, the short answer is we can. There's no way we can guarantee that we will end up at a global minimum. Uh, but we can try to avoid local minima as much as possible. And we are going to do this via uh, stochastic gradient descent. I'll explain this in a couple of minutes, how stochastic gradient uh, descent uh, helps with preventing to getting stuck in uh, local minima. But the challenge here is we are dealing with an error function which is not convex. Uh, so we have to deal with local minima. Now, by far the most popular technique for optimizing or minimizing error functions in, in deep learning uh, is via stochastic gradient descent. And there's reasons for, for its popularity. First of all, it has a very simple update rule. Uh, it has a very simple update rule, maybe this one, because in stochastic gradient descent, I only approximate my gradients with, with one data point or maybe a few data points. So it has a very simple update rule, efficient to compute, but it has some properties that also prevents um, the, the, the gradient descent of getting stuck at local minima. But before we get there, let's review what gradient descent does. So we start off with an initial estimate of my model parameters W. So tau is uh, my tau iteration. And then I'm going to find my new set of parameters W by walking in the negative gradient direction, right? Because the gradient point upwards and I want to go downwards. So I take a step in the negative gradient direction uh, with some step size eta. And as I just explained, we're dealing with an error function that has a lot of local minima, so we quite easily get stuck at such a local minimum. So let's take a look at uh, this figure, which I uh, drew in preparation and which I'm now going to fill in. So the setting is as follows. So this gray region indicates some error function as a function, let's say, of two model parameters W1 and W2. And I'm interested in obtaining this point over here. So this is my globally optimal uh, minimum. It's the lowest uh, error value I can find for all possible Ws. But then I have all these local minima, right? So uh, initially, of course, I do not know what my uh, optimal value will be. So I have to make an initial guess. And let's say uh, I start off with uh, this set of model parameters at, at tau is zero. So my initialization of the weights. Then what I'm doing with gradient descent, I'm going to make an estimate of this gradient or actually with full gradient descent, I make, uh, I actually compute the full gradient. So that's what this uh, arrow indicates. And I'm going to walk downhill and then again, check my gradient, walk downhill. Okay, so 
I walk downhill this land energy landscape or air landscape via gradient descent, and that actually leads to the result that I end up at this local minimum. And of course, if I would put my in initialization somewhere else, so maybe let's say over here, then a gradient descent will bring me to this local uh, minimum. And if I put my uh, initial weight over here, then maybe we would end up at the global optimal location. But because my energy landscape is, is highly non-convex, um, I'm bound to end up at some local minimum. Okay, so that's the issue with uh, regular gradient descent. And now we're going to consider stochastic gradient descent. And this means that, now first of all, my error is uh, a sum of all these in individual errors. Uh, so that means I can also approximate my gradient by just computing the gradient for one data point. So the stochastic gradient descent method works as follows. So we choose some learning, some step rate uh, eta, we initialize, and then we sequen sequentially choose one point out of my data set randomly and use this, only this point to update my weights. Uh, so that gives me an estimate of, of the gradient based on the single data point and I'm going to use this uh, gradient to update my weights. And of course, instead of working with just a single data point, I could also maybe uh, average this gradient or take the sum of my error terms over a range of data points, uh, M. So maybe work with uh, 16 uh, data points to approximate my error. And that's what, and that is what you call a mini batch. So a mini batch of 16 of, su of such data points are, for example, used to approximate uh, the error. So I'm going to indicate that as follows. So I'm going to say that both of these uh, provide me an approximation of the gradient. So I'm going to de denote that with this uh, tilde over here. Okay, so now let's see how that would work. Um, I'm using this approximate gradient ID because now um, if I compute this approximate gradient at this point, for example, maybe it points in this direction because this energy error landscape looks slightly different for each data point. Maybe for one data point, it's more efficient not to change my Ws in this direction. And for the other, it's efficient in, to do this in this direction. So for every data point, I would actually get maybe a different estimate of the gradient. So if I now do stochastic gradient descent, okay, I have a noisy estimate of the gradient. I take a step, I end up at this location. Again, noisy estimate. Uh, maybe that's somewhere over here. Maybe for this data point, it's in this direction. Okay, so I have these stochastic updates. And of course, that has still the chance that I end up at this uh, local minima. Huh? But because my uh, gradient estimate is so noisy, it could also be that at some point I estimate the gradient in this direction and take a step in this direction and then the next point. And so I am able to escape such local minima because these gradients, they look different for every data point. And that actually has the property that I'm able to escape local minima. And that could actually lead to the result that I'm I will end up at another local minimum, which is even lower than what I encountered just, just now. Okay, so that motivates why it would be actually a good thing to work with uh, approximate gradients via the stochastic gradient uh, descent method rather than working with uh, the full uh, gradient descent. Okay, so to continue on this comparison with uh, gradient and stochastic gradient descent. Well, first of all, both rely on this learning rate, right? And we saw that actually before in, uh, in our video on uh, gradient descent. So if the learning rate is too small, um, then basically it takes me a long time to to end up at some local uh, optimal location. And in the stochastic gradient descent case, moreover, it may be more harder, it may be harder to actually leave such a uh, local optima because my step size are so small. So I always stay in this vicinity of this uh, local um, optimum location. But uh, conversely, if my step size is too large, then I completely jump over all these uh, optimal locations and I will never converge to, to anything. So what people tend to do is they tend to work with a learning rate schedule. Like they start off with a high learning rate. So that quite quickly brings me somewhere close to, let's say some optimal region. And then I decrease the step size that brings me closer to the optimal location and then a further decrease. So I really refine my optimal solution in the end. Okay, so these learning rate issues sort of both equally well apply to the gradient and the, the stochastic gradient descent uh, 
a method. But then apart from the possibility to escape local minima with a stochastic gradient descent, there's another motivation for a stochastic gradient descent, and that's namely that they're much more efficient. So in order to compute this gradient, I only need to do this forward pass for maybe one or a few data points in my uh, mini batch. So this is uh, fast to compute. And if you would compare this maybe to uh, the full gradient, especially at the beginning, all of these gradients roughly point in the same direction because my initial solution is likely to, to be very poor. Then, uh, then, then that means there's also a very clear direction to go to, to improve my uh, solution. And with this, I mean, if I have, for example, my initial point over here, so this is W0, then let's say my true gradient points in this direction. So that would be my uh, true uh, gradient. And then I have all these noisy estimates. Uh, for example, for data point um, one, the gradient for data point one, for example, points in this direction, uh, the gradient for data point two, maybe in this direction, so that it's a gradient of data point two, uh, maybe for uh, another one in this direction. So I have all these, well, noisy estimates, but roughly they, they all point in the same direction. So uh, especially at the start, I just want to have a, a course direction to follow and then just estimating this gradient with one data point would be enough to, to get me going in the right direction. So if you compare this to the full error, which is based on all data points, this is very expensive to compute, whereas uh, these gradients are only computed with a few or maybe even only one uh, data point. So this is super efficient uh, to compute. Okay, so that's summarized over here. I do not necessarily need the full gradient uh, because all my gradients are roughly aligned. So I can also make an estimate with one or a couple of data points. And then we saw this point that stochastic gradient descent is more likely to escape a local minimum since, uh, so if my total gradient would be zero, that means I'm not going to update my weights, but this does not necessarily imply that this gradient is the same for each data point, right? So if I visualize that again over here, let's suppose here I have a true gradient, which is zero, but uh, because this landscape looks slightly different for every data point, it could be that maybe uh, for this uh, particular data point, my gradient looks like this. And that means I would take a step in this direction. And then again, there I have some estimate. Uh, so um, working with these noisy gradients really uh, allows you to escape local minima. Okay, so those are some strong arguments uh, for uh, using stochastic gradient descent over a gradient descent. Uh, but maybe then there's an argument against a stochastic gradient descent. So let's compare the two in, in a similar situation. So what you would do with a gradient descent, you would really directly walk downhill and that would end you up at this uh, uh, globally optimal, or let's say some optimal location. Now, what would happen in the stochastic gradient descent case, uh, because I have these noisy estimates, um, I am probably going to take a very roundabout route to my optimal location. So I would need much more uh, iterates to converge to uh, a local optimum. But then again, the advantage of a stochastic gradient descent is, is that these uh, gradients are super fast to compute because I only need one or a few data points, whereas here I need to process my full data set. So the point of this slide is that stochastic re uh, gradient descent uh, requires more steps, but each gradient update is uh, fast to compute. Okay, uh, but then there's one final but very important uh, remark, and that is that uh, because I have this uh, non-convex energy landscape, uh, my solution highly depends on how I initialize my model, right? So basically for every different starting point for my models, I may end up at a different uh, optimal location. And one sol final solution to which I converge to might be more, uh, well, might be better than uh, the others. And that's nicely visualized over here. So this is a plot of the test error. So uh, test error. So the test error for different neural networks, which 
with a different number of parameters. So uh, what is plotted here is the number of hidden units. Um, so, uh, so I'm training networks for different uh, network complexities. So 10 means I have a lot of hidden units, so my network is complex, and therefore I, I can also expect more local minima in my uh, error function. And this is a very simple model, and therefore I can expect a smoother or, uh, let's say, um, cleaner or nicer uh, error landscape. So then for each model, so for each model complexity, I randomly pick a new uh, initial seed, so uh, initial set of parameters W. And for my simple model, I see that all of these uh, solutions of all these models, they converge to the same model with a particular, which give a particular test error. But if I go for the higher models, then my error functions are highly uh, non-convex, so a lot of local minima. I see that my solutions uh, depend a lot on how I initialize. So some initial Ws end up converging to a very poor local minimum. So I still make a lot of errors, uh, but some models, uh, they are able to reach a very, very good uh, local optimal location. And therefore they, they, they end up with very strong models. And, and that's sort of a general trend, right? So with local minima, you have more stable uh, optimization methods um, because there's not much model complexity and not much variation really among my models. But if I go to very complex models, uh, then um, I tend to end up at, at local optimal locations. And then really the difference between this very complex, good working model um, is there with, with, with the same complex model, but now with a poor solution. So we have these high variations in test error. Okay, so this, this also means that always, whenever you report uh, your errors or your performance scores with neural networks, you, sh you should always um, rerun your training procedure with different initializations of W. Because uh, if you run it once and you end up with a model which is very accurate, uh, then you report it and you say, hey, yay, I, I got state of the art. Um, but maybe then someone re-implements your method and then discovers, but wait, that you were just very lucky. Um, I actually end up with this model. So um, be fair about the numbers that you report and um, also report uncertainties on your performances. So the message is... So always run with several initializations because this allows you to gain some understanding on the uncertainty on your models. Okay, so that wraps it up for um, neural network optimization via stochastic gradient descent. Um, currently, stochastic gradient descent is really the method to optimize your neural networks uh, because they're so simple and they have these properties that, well, uh, they have ways of escaping local minima. But still, there's, this is not a guarantee that you won't end up at local minima. In fact, you're super likely to end up with a local minima. And that leads that you, to the fact that you also can expect variability in your models.